Astrology of Reincarnation Created, Directed, and Presented by Rev. Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen In this video discussion, Dr. Mullen will reflect on the concept of reincarnation and, and how it is associated with astrological signs. This is astrologer and parapsychologist Dr. Dickie Jo Mullen in Orlando, Florida with some thoughts about reincarnation and accessing your past lives through regressive hypnosis. Another chance to get it right. Some years ago I was at a conference in Chicago for hypnosis and I heard something in line that really struck me. It was a conversation. I love to eavesdrop. It's a good way to um, oh, learn about life and not have to go through a lot of the pain. And what I heard while eavesdropping was, well, this life looks like pretty much of a washout. Maybe I could pin my hopes on the next. The speaker was a rather sad-faced middle-aged gentleman, and this poignant remark uh, and amid a variety of workshops and meditation sessions offered how to explore, recall, and understand past life experiences. After that, I went on to study regressive hypnosis and to learn um, how to study my own past lives and those of others, and I would like to share that with you in the film today. A belief in the rebirth of the soul into successive bodies was first embraced in ancient Greece and then in India and also among the Native Americans. Many pagan traditions also teach that the soul returns to earth again after a time of rest in the summer land, the afterlife, however you would like to label that other dimension. The Pythagoreans and Orphics of Greece believe that each soul was reborn several times. Finally, eventually, by living a good life, um, the faith is, is that we grow more and more refined and purified. And the Hindu faith features that leading a life of virtue and goodness is rewarded by rebirth into a higher form and better living circumstances. Others believe that the souls of those who have passed away are reborn into the same tribes or same family. It's thought that even animals and supernatural beings can come back, being born into higher or lower life forms. Believe it or not, I have a wonderful client. He's been coming to me for years who for unfortunately lost his father, and he believed that a German shepherd dog that turned up at his office, a purebred German shepherd apparently out of nowhere, was the soul of his father. Was that true? Well, maybe it was. Oh dear, and here we have a visitor who wants to learn about his own past lives, Monsieur Templeton. Um, oh, Monsieur Templeton, why don't you come up here and you can learn about your past lives. No, you've changed your mind now. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, our video should be alive and interesting, and Templeton wanted to make a cameo appearance there. It's interesting when I started talking about the dog that he appeared because I often have thought the animals that find their way to me might be either pets from before, I've had a number of them, or possibly relatives or friends, because everyone in my own family is away in the afterlife, and I like to think they're coming back. Other people believe the souls of those who've passed away, again, are born into the same tribe or family. The Vedic scriptures teach that the god Vishnu is reborn into the bodies of several deserving mortals um, who became avatars, higher beings. The Caribou Eskimo tribe believes that the moon helps the dead to return to earth as human beings, fish, birds, or other animals. After a seal hunt, the Eskimos will sometimes hold mourning rites for the seals in case they were the souls of loved ones. This is to assure that the seals killed also will be born again and again. The Native Americans of the Southwest believe that the Kakina, supernatural beings, would return as deer. 
Other Native American traditions believe that those who've passed away might return as corn, tobacco, squash, um, in order to nurture living beings. Famous people who had different beliefs that did embrace reincarnation include Salvador Dali, William Blake, A. Conan Doyle, Henry Ford, um, Henry David Thoreau, Pearl Buck, General George Patton, and Charles Darwin, among others. Even the venerable Benjamin Franklin at age 22, and he lived a long life, well into his 80s, I think, um, hinted at his own views when he wrote his own witty epitaph. This is Benjamin Franklin at age 22. The body of B. Franklin Printer, like the cover of an old book, its contents torn out and stripped of the lettering and gilding, lies here. Food for worms, but the book shall not be lost, for it will be, as he believed, appear once more in a new and more elegant edition, revised and corrected by the author. In a letter to a friend many years later, when he was over 80 years of age, Franklin wrote, I look upon death as necessary to the Constitution as sleep. We shall arise refreshed in the morning. The certainty of reincarnation isn't easy to prove, though. Sometimes old birth records can verify a long-ago lifetime, which one might have had come up in a dream or regression, but it's largely a matter of faith. When we go out and actually try to do that, it's a little problematic. The strongest support comes from an inner acceptance of what feels right. Numerous instances of people recalling details about previous lives, showing unexplainable aptitudes, or having knowledge that it would have been impossible to acquire, support the idea of having lived before. Astrologers will examine retrograde planets in the natal horoscopes for insights into old business hanging on from a past life. In esoteric astrology, the sun is the soul itself, while the moon sign is the emotional rememberings of the soul. The moon sign can suggest the location of past lives. Regressive hypnosis, which we're going to try in a minute here, is a popular technique used to pursue past live studies. A trained hypnotist um, will guide the subject to explore the scene of an important past life while in a light trance state. After undergoing hypnosis and examining past lives experienced, great insight can be gained. Afterward, the subject might be encouraged to visit the actual locations of other lives. For example, if a past life image comes up of Hawaii, a vacation in Hawaii, that sounds like a good idea anyway, would help to recall it. If it's not practical to travel, suppose your past life is, oh my goodness, somewhere we might hesitate to go, what about Siberia? right now. Um, you could look at films or pictures or collect literature, music, and recipes in order to trigger the reflection of another time or place. Recording dreams and impressions which occur after a past life regression can help with further study. Now, how do you know whether awakening in the morning you had a real past life regression or a dream? Well, it's easy to tell. Remember how when you wake up in the morning, a vivid dream is gone, unless one writes it down. Most of the time, it's hard to recall it by lunchtime, even if it was a really dramatic dream. A past life regression isn't like that. If it's a genuine regression, it grows in clarity and time, and it isn't forgotten. Um, for those who are unable or unwilling to undergo a formal regression with a therapist, there is a wonderful technique which almost always works. While drifting into sleep, visualize yourself boarding a train and settle comfortably into the train seat and let it move backwards as you're falling asleep into the scene of an important past life. If this doesn't work the first night, it might over a period of time and start to record 
flashes of impressions and recollections upon awakening. If you have a special love of a certain era or aptitude for it, that can be a sign. Um, the strange case of patient's worth with Pearl Curran, which occurred some years back, was all about recollections that would come to someone about a life in Ireland many, many years before she was born in the 20th century that were very historically accurate. And then the, the Seth books also are extremely good sources as far as there being a past life regression that, um, that can be recorded and can get going, can be worked on for many, many years. And so a uh, past life can be a one-time study or it can go on for a long time. I had one client come in for a past life regression who was born in Texas and had lived most of her life there until she was lucky enough to come here to Orlando. I love Orlando, that's why I say that. And she said that she felt so drawn to make baked beans the way they were made, prepared in Boston during colonial times with brown sugar and some. She even looked up the recipe and she had made baked beans that way her whole life, but the recipe was an actual historic one that just came to her. And if someone has a natural aptitude and doesn't know how, um, one very famous study is a book called Unfinished Symphonies with a very poorly trained musician, Rosemary Brown, who suddenly could write in the styles of uh, Bach, Beethoven, and other classical musicians. And she was examined by experts in the field of musicology who said she couldn't possibly have had the ability to compose some of the things she did in unfinished symphonies. And so if you have a natural aptitude for drawing or know how naturally to take care of a plant or maybe cook a dish, that could be a clue as to an important past life. If you have a certain love or dislike of a culture, that can be a sign. Um, in my own past life studies, I absolutely detest anything country western. Back in the days before terrorism, I used to joke that my car was wired to blow up if anyone turned the, the um, radio to a country western station. And even looking at a cowboy hat, um, learning to ride horses, I insisted on writing English style instead of Western, which isn't the usual thing here at all, because of, and then it turned out there were negative images of a past life in the opening up of the Old West, an evil lifetime in the 1840s. Anyway, if you have a similar experience, that could be a thought. I'd like to now offer you a short past life regression. Make sure the cell phone is turned off, and there's maybe a sign on the door that says, do not disturb. Nothing bad would happen, but it can be a real jolt if you do go into a light hypnotic state. And we're going to try a hypnotic regression. Take three deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. And release the stresses of the day. You can't do anything about them because you're here listening to the tape. And follow the sound of my voice. If your thoughts start to wander, bring them back and focus. As you inhale and exhale, visualize your own front door, the home where you live now. And as you visualize the front door, look at the color. Are there any numbers? Are you on the ground floor, upper floor, as an apartment complex? It's where you live now. And now, step back and look up into the sky. Is it day? or is it night? Is the sky blue, or is it cloudy and stormy? As you're studying the sky, relax, let go, and float up, up, and up. You feel very light, very well, and you're moving up into the sky. And now relax, you feel very well, very, very soothed sense of happiness and well-being. And as you're doing that, you lie down. It's like it's a magic carpet. It's so comfortable. And you realize your body is like a giant compass needle. It's turning around. Your head is north, going east. 
you feel comfortable and well, make the circuit around, and you realize you're going to move into the direction, point to the scene of an important past life. As I count forward from one to three, move so that your head is pointing toward the scene of an important past life. One, two, three. Oh, and now you feel very well. It's like you're an arrow. You're released from the circle of the compass, and you're headed to the scene of an important past life. Relax and enjoy the journey. And as you are relaxing, enjoying the journey in your mind's eye, there is a calendar page. It's a square white page with a single black digit. And the black digit is today's date, and underneath it is the month. So, today's date, and the month underneath it, and the here and now. And now the calendar page is rippling in a gentle, balmy wind, and it's tearing away. It's gone. You're now looking at yesterday's date. And now go back, back, back. Relax. Inhale, exhale. Life and death are like black and white beads on a chain. It's all peaceful and eternal symbol. There's nothing negative, nothing to worry about, but you're suddenly looking at a date of importance. You're looking at September 11th of 2001, the day of the World Trade Centers. Where were you when you heard the news? You're there. And you remember it clearly and easily. And now relax and let go and move further and further back. Dates in the early 20th century, 21st century, 2000 are there. You're going back into the 1990s, the 1980s. Relax and enjoy the journey. You're going back, back, back as you journey to the place of an important past life. And now you're at your own birth date. And all of a sudden your birth date's gone. You're floating in the space between lives. There are dates way, way back, the more recent history, early 20th century, 19th century. They're all around you. You feel very well, very at peace, and now the journey is stopping, and you realize you're looking at the date of an important past life. Let yourself see it and read it. You will remember it, and you're going down. It feels good to go back to Earth. You're drifting down, down, down. Touch, toe, heel, down. Oh, you're back on the Earth and you're at the scene of an important past life, look down at your feet. What types of shoes are you wearing? You'll remember easily. And as you look at your feet, begin to look at the rest of your body. How are you dressed? Are you dressed in modern clothes, more ancient clothes? Are you male or are you female? You'll easily remember. And now, Look around at the scene around you. Are you indoors? Are you outdoors? It's easy to remember and look. Let yourself see the scene. Let it come to you. Is it winter? Is it spring? Perhaps summer or fall? Look around and observe whether you're in the country alone, whether you're in a city, any people or animals, landscape features, observe them. How old are you? And as that realization comes to you, find a path. Let the path lead you to the home where you live now. Follow the path to your present in this lifetime that you're seeing residence. Go to your home. Let yourself 
follow it, take your time, but continue along and let yourself go to your own front door. As I count forward from one to seven, you will be arriving at the place where you live. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're looking at your home and you ask yourself, do you live there alone or are there relatives? Go up to the door and open the door and step inside. As you do, you'll think of what you're going to have for dinner tonight, where your room is, where you sleep, whether the house is large or small, and more and more details will come to you. Look around, you feel very well, very positive, very pleasantly surprised at this glimpse into an important past life. What's important to you? What do you do? All of this and more will come to you. And as you sleep during the next few nights, as you meditate, reflect, flashes of this past life will deepen and become more vivid and more meaningful. And now we're about to come back to the here and now, look around one last time, and as I count forward from 1 to 10, you'll come back with vivid and meaningful realizations. You feel very good, very positive, a sense of deeper understanding about your path in life. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Begin to open your eyes and look into the crystal ball on my table. The crystal ball is an amplified focus for meditation. And as you gaze into it, let the past life memories solidify and you'll realize that they will amplify and become more extensive and more meaningful. This is Dickie Jo Mullen in Orlando, Florida. Remember that we can only live one life at a time, but enjoy this little journey and glimpse into how you have come along as far on the path as you have. Many regressionists believe that anyone who's been born into a developed country is already an old soul. So hopefully that brings you a sense of peace and happiness and well-being about who you are and where you are in this lifetime.